You can also write automation curves in real time using a keyboard modifier plus the mouse. To do this, open the plugin editor and begin playback. Now press Ctrl plus Alt. Then adjust the parameter you want to automate with your mouse. That parameter will now be written in real time to your track. Take note that this method works with all track automation but not with object automation. If especially dense passages of automation have been created, open the automation menu and choose Edit Selected Curve Thin Out. This menu also contains commands to delete the active curve or to delete all curves for that track. There is also an option to enable snapping of automation nodes. To enable this, press Y and go to General, Use Snap for Automation Curve Points. This works when adjusting existing nodes and uses the active snap value. Now when you move a node, it will snap to the current value. You can use the Alt modifier to bypass snapping. Here's how to automate the AUX send of a vocal track to an AUX effect bus. First, we need to add a new AUX bus from the menu item Track, Insert New Tracks, New AUX Bus. I'm now clicking on the AUX bus insert slot and navigating to Delay Reverb, Variverb Pro. I'm choosing one of the AUX init models from the preset list. These are intended to be used on AUX buses. Select the vocal track, open the automation menu and choose AUX send 1 AUX send 1. The corresponding automation curve should now be visible along the bottom of the track. Also the name AUX send will be displayed in the effect box of the automation pane plus one AUX send will be displayed in the parameter box below. Now insert a single automation node using your preferred mouse mode. I'm using curve move and grab mode. Then create a second node further along to the right of the timeline. I'm left clicking and dragging that node upwards to create a transition from node 1. Now click on the small arrow to the left of the AUX header in the track editor to reveal the AUX send pane. Click the first button below the arrow to enable the first send. Doing that should turn on that individual AUX send. Make sure the master AUX send button is enabled as well. Place the play cursor before the first node and begin playback. You should now hear a gradual increase in reverb for that track. Object automation is object based rather than track based and is applied to individual audio objects. You can automate the same effects and parameters as you can with track automation, but on the object level. If you're used to using a different door, you may be more familiar with the terms clip, item or region. To use object automation, select an audio object, then double click to open the object editor. Or use the keyboard shortcut, Ctrl plus O. Make sure the Show box is ticked. Doing this will hide any existing track automation and only object automation will be visible. I'm going to click on the first plugin slot and select Modulation Special EFX Chorus Flanger. 
If I open the automation menu, the EFX Chorus Flanger is now showing in the list. So I'm choosing 7 Depth from the parameter menu. The name of the effect should now be shown in the effect field and the active parameter in the field below. Click on the pencil icon to activate Automation Draw mode. The relevant curve for that parameter will now be overlaid on just that audio object. I'm now using the pencil to draw in an automation envelope for that parameter. Notice that when I start playback, the chorus flanger automation only occurs when playback passes over that object. If you want to automate another parameter, choose it from the list and the curve for that parameter will be selected. If you want to edit the original curve, just click on it and it will become selected. Alternatively, just click on the parameter field and select it from the top of the list. Doing this will select the corresponding curve for that object. Notice that when a curve is selected, the relevant parameter is displayed in the parameter field. When you finish drawing in your automation, make sure you remember to deselect the pencil tool to return to your usual mouse mode. Because this automation is specifically object based, you can move or copy objects anywhere in the VIP, and the automation curves are retained along with any other object settings. You can even save individual objects. To do this, go to the menu item File. Save Object. You can then load the saved object into the existing project or to another project. To do this, go to the menu item File, Open, Object. The object has now been loaded into the project, complete with plugin and automation. So essentially, objects are self contained. If you prefer to use hardware when writing automation, Samplitude supports a good range of control surfaces. Support is included for the Avid Artist series using the Yukon protocol, SSL Nucleus and Mackie Control. Press Y to open the system options and select Hardware Controller to enter the Hardware Controller setup window. You can activate Yukon by selecting the Activate Yukon checkbox. For other controllers, click on the Add New button to browse a list of factory presets for supported controllers. You can also create custom mappings for unsupported controllers.